Uh, hey, Kenny, could you introduce the show? <laughs> yeah, I'll do that now. Thank you. Hello, and welcome <laughs> back to Deep Dish. We're deep dishing. We're deep dishing. We're deep dishing on yeah. Three Body Problem. Is this episode seven? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> You're like, thank we're God, we're, we're almost, almost done. done. <laughs> hey, if you yeah trudge through this whole adventure with us, congratulations and thank you. <laughs> you deserve something special. But yeah, episode seven, which is called the Star is Our Destination. No, yet. that was the last one. <laughs> Shoot, I forgot what it was. I didn't write it down. Only advance. Only advance. That's- Do you remember feeling any of the feelings we're having now? in your initial watch through of the show. Uh, obviously, it's different than what we experience, but I think it's it's a different thing altogether. It is. Yeah. Because I mean, sometimes I wonder if, if it's fair it's for not. us to cover it no, the it's way not. we do. It's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wrong. What we, what we do is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's unethical. <We're laughs> I, I think looking at something post... Uh, I don't know, post-coitus, you know? Uh Uh-huh, after you fuck. Uh, After you fuck. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) When you look at this and analyze it afterwards, Uh uh, there's a lot more detail-oriented stuff and you don't have it wash over you as much. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so when we're looking at the writing and stuff and seeing that it doesn't exactly, yeah, Yeah. that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, cards on the table. (laughs) When we first watched it, we both really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. And I still kind of like it. I mean, I like the idea of it. I definitely like the idea of it, and I (laughs) like parts of the show, and I want to see season two happen. I want to see season two. That's still all true. Yeah. So if you are just flowing (laughs) through the show for your first time and watching our episodes after, you probably think, what the fuck is wrong with these guys? (laughs) But if you watch it twice and try to analyze it the second time. Sure. Yeah, it kind of falls apart. We start off with Will is showing Saul the star he bought. Oh, right. They're out on the little porch of their beach house, and he's like, it's that one. So I was like, that's not the so one. So I was like, that's not it. And he's like, but it is. And he's like, I don't know what fucking star that is. I don't know. Just messing with you, dude. Cute. Yeah. Cute. It was a funny moment. It was. It was a dialogue-based exposition to explain that he did buy a star for Jin. He did. And that he spent, I think, $19 million. 19.5. 19.5, correction. Which I thought was a funny line that he said, because that's what Saul He Saul corrects says. Saul. He says 19.5. Yeah. 19.5. Like, like yeah. he's a rich guy? Yeah. I just thought that was weird. Look. Weird this is character I, moment. I don't buy this thing. Like, <laughs> I know it's sci-fi and all, Yeah, but like... You don't put the unbelievable stuff in the parts that are based in our world. <laughs> you didn't. You, you put didn't it in the reality. science fiction stuff about the aliens, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I think you can buy a star for your loved one right now. We talked about this yes, uh, yesterday. Yeah. We talked about it last time. Yeah. It was, uh, what was it? We were talking about war bonds yeah. and stuff. And this is the equivalent of something like that. And I think it's interesting if they've they've written it this way where the stars are destination this company is targeting billionaires and saying hey uh you can help our war efforts mm-hmm. in a capitalistic society and we'll give you a star yeah which it, up until last month we used to do for 1999 <laughs> we'd send you a little certificate yeah well these ones are bigger certificates yeah, and you can see them with the naked eye you know what's kind of weird is that the certificate that they get is like a nice you know wooden frame and whatnot yeah was, i mean for 19 and a half million i would expect a that's, at least a nice presentation i'm thinking it should be like a sculpture or some shit right yeah Not it should be much fun. more than that yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the thing that cost maybe $40. They should have sent you a telescope or something. (laughs) You're right. I don't know. (laughs) Ah, whatever. I had kind of like, I don't know, it's not really an epiphany, but kind of something came clear to me yesterday. And it was something that we've talked about throughout this entire series about how we have half a Friends episode happening and half Three Body Problem happening. Mm -hmm. They're not following like, like your basic screenplay rules. No. Where in a screenplay, if you were to make it into like a pyramid, you would have everything based on character. You have character and then, uh, I don't know, something else and then plot. I can't remember what this middle section is, but everything's based on character. That's the Mm -hmm. point, right? And because they have this IP that they're working with, they already have the plot. And so they're building backwards into the character. Ah, yeah. And it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult, but they they haven't achieved that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. No. I just wanted to say that. 
Well, and they keep trying to shoehorn in these character moments. Right. That's what this is. That's, that's what this scene right. is. That's my point, right, is exactly this scene is a funny scene, but it's not, like, it doesn't belong in this movie. No. Yeah. Or movie, a show, whatever this is. And then Will passes out. Right. As if on cue. It was kind of funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. He got his line out first. And then we smash cut to the uh, uh, opening credits uh, sting. And then the next thing we know, Jen is FaceTiming Will in the hospital. And Will's on drugs. He's higher than Willie Nelson. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I would have thought uh, that this would have been the moment where Will confesses his love. Yeah, when he's on drugs. Because he's high and he's talking to her. It would have made this a lot more interesting, I think. They do do this thing that's a little intimate. Yeah, I love that. I think it's funny, though. We talk about good character moments in here. This is one of them where (laughs) Will keeps repeating things that doesn't make sense. Like, we've got a really good room. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. But, like, he's showing the iPad and he's only showing, like, his stuff. He's not pointing correctly. I thought that was funny. It's real. It feels real. real. Yeah. Just doesn't feel real to the story. <laughs> right. Yeah. Nothing's happened with the story yet in this episode. No plot yet. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. No okay. Plot. We're just reminding the audience <laughs> that Will is probably going to die soon. Right. And in loves case, Jen. In case we forgot. Yeah. In case yeah. you forgot, Will <laughs> loves Jen is probably going to die really soon. You might need to remember that fact for what's coming. Wow. That's what the episode is literally telling. Yeah, people. yeah. It's very, very yeah. heavy on that. You know what? I wonder if uh, Dan and Dave were responsible for the uh, previously on scenes at the beginning of Game of Thrones episodes. <laughs> Do you remember this? Yeah. Because it's always seemed to feel like that they believed the audience was really dumb. This is exactly what I was saying yesterday, or last, what I keep saying yesterday. Did we do this yesterday? I can't recall. Anyway, last time. <laughs> that's what I was saying, too. Uh, Dan yeah. and Dave feel like, I feel like they think we're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, <clears throat> they're going to have some big, like, character return moment in an episode of right. Game of Thrones. And so they see Someone you it. haven't seen in maybe two seasons. Right. And so in the previously on, they show when that character was on the show back two seasons ago right to like refresh your memory that he exists <laughs> right which like just completely spoils the surprise of that guy you're like oh i guess he's coming back this episode yeah exactly yeah, yeah. it felt it feels like they did that it does i see their fingerprints on that <laughs> anyway when jen gets off the zoom call with will she gets a delivery in the mail damn what's the delivery Oh, it's a big framed certificate that says, you own a star now. Damn. And it wasn't Raj who bought it, right? No, and it wasn't Raj. (laughs) And Raj is like, what is this? Who was it? Who Who was it? Jen don't know, but it's Will. (laughs) And and it seemed, I'm really surprised that she didn't put the pieces together really quickly. (laughs) That, That Will just got this massive inheritance. I mean, maybe she didn't know. I guess she didn't. But know. even then, she she says out loud, "The only person I've ever known with that kind of money was Jack," right? Oh, right. Jack is best friends with Will. Will is dying. I don't know. It didn't <laughs> seem like it'd be that hard to guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Does uh, it matter? Nah. Raj is jealous, and he's like, "It's from Wade. He fancies you." Right, Wade. Yeah, Wade's been throwing some real sexual energy towards yeah. Jen. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Damn. It's going to be a short episode, guys. <laughs> you uh, know, when I was watching this episode, I was like, I don't, I'm not going to have a whole lot to say we here. There's just not a lot to say in this one. There's God not, damn. They're not, they're not doing anything that we haven't talked about previously. Not a lot. Not till the end. Yeah. And a lot of it is character moments mm-hmm. that we talked about. I just realized your shirt has two different types of A's on it. No, oh, that's yeah, it fucking weird. <laughs> now that I look at the... Yeah. Why would that be? I don't know. That's really weird. <laughs> his, his, his shirt says amazing, and the first I'm A... I'm ashamed. The first A is pointy, and the second A is round. Yeah. But all the other letters match. It's kind of like the logo for 7-Eleven. You ever looked at that? I have not. It's really weird. Um, I'm not going to go into it now. It sounds more interesting. (laughs) (laughs) 
Continue, not with 7-Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> Ask me later, though. It's fascinating. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so Raj is, like, jealous, and Jen is like, what does this mean? Who is it from? What a mystery. And then the next thing we know, Jen is visiting a cryogenics laboratory. Right, with the monkey. Uh-huh. Where they spent all of their budget on that CGI. And didn't spend enough, honestly. <laughs> I thought that was really detailed. I'm not saying... I'm the not, visual? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was detailed. Yeah. But it, I didn't buy it as a real ape, still. I don't know. It had odd, odd like, movements and, and proportions. Yeah. It didn't... It didn't feel like a, a real ape in the way that, like, uh, Planet of the Apes from freaking what's his name? New ones? Or? Yeah, the newer ones yeah. feel real. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't that impressed with it, actually. I was, imp- I, was imp- I don't know what to say. I wasn't really impressed because I could... I there was know. something wrong with it. It felt like <laughs> it wasn't integrated properly. Okay. You know, like sometimes a CGI character might be really, really well uh, constructed. Yeah. But but not animated. Properly. Almost looks like it's under different lighting than the scene that the other characters are in. Yeah, I think I know what you and mean. It just kind of stands out as, oh, that's the fake one. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like an animation cell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Who cares? No one cares. I watched Jumanji recently. Oh, and those that movie are bad. freaking stands up. It's a great movie. Yeah, and you don't care that the ki- that they look bad. <laughs> they look really bad. They look really bad. Yeah, that's my whole point. Is they look really bad, yeah. and it doesn't matter because you're invested in the story and yeah. the characters, and you like it. So why are they here at the cryogenics? They're here because uh, Wade. Actually, Wade hasn't told them yet. No. So they're just here. No, it's no, no. It does make sense because yeah. the person in the probe will be in the probe way too long. Even right. at the 1% of light speed, it's still like over 100 years. Did he say we're sending a probe with a person in it? Is that what he said? Yes. Okay. They've already said that. Okay. So so we're here assuming that this cryogenics is going to be that's going to be human. used for that purpose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so they wake up the monkey. The monkey uh, pukes and... Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about this scene. Okay. This is uh this is interesting because the because we've talked about how their cinematography choices in here have I don't know, have done things that don't seem to fit what the story is talking about, you know what I mean? Sure. Like the the thing here is that all the shots here are very low. Um uh, and you know whenever you have a low shot pointing up, you're presenting something with power usually. Sure. Um with here with the ape or whatever um, the cameras are just low because he's short and that's it. Uh, but not only that, but it's like everything that they're doing here is very slow. Not just the, the, the ape walking, not just because he's, you know, been frozen, but because like the, the, I don't know if the camera moves here, but I know that all the actions here are very slow. Yeah. And there's a lot of, um, close-ups. There's a lot of very, very shallow depth of field close-ups uh-huh. putting a lot of emphasis on this ape. Yeah. And so I, the whole time I'm thinking like, oh, this ape is going to like fucking do something crazy. His brain's going to blow up or, or something's going to be like really fucking weird. Uh-huh. And that's why we're focusing so hard on the ape and nothing happens. I mean, he throws up, but even then they, they cut to it's a wide shot. It's not a big shot. deal. It's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. And he even says he brushes He's it like, off. like, oh yeah, this is expected. Yeah. In yeah. the middle of the scene too. Yeah. So it's not, it's definitely not supposed to be a jump scare no. of any kind. No. Um, yeah, see, you you are trying to interpret the scene yeah. as though it was shot with the intent of storytelling. <laughs> Visual storytelling. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's not the case. Oh. I'll tell you exactly what's oh. happening here in this scene. Gotcha, okay. And it's that this is the only scene with a CGI character in the whole movie, <laughs> sure. in the whole show, right? Sure. Uh, it's a separate unit from the whole rest of the show, I guarantee you. Yeah. They had, they had maybe even a, like a contracted production company running this one this unit. is this is unit c or whatever because it because it's <laughs> dealing with the cgi character right integrated you notice uh on my on the second watch through almost no one in the scene moves <laughs> they stay in one place and they stand very still with the exception of the doc the main doctor dude 
right? Yeah. Everyone else is just like glued to their position. Kind of, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, that's because they have all these markers and points and that they're hitting <laughs> with their little tennis ball on the stick. Right, or whoever's doing like animatronic, or not animatronic, but uh, the golf. Motion <laughs> capture. Motion capture, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Golf ball, I was trying to say ping yeah. pong ball. So in other words, this was shot for coverage. Oh, interesting. <laughs> that's that's weird. It was about hitting the dots, hitting the points. I guess close up is close well, the, the the thing with uh, with a close up is yeah. you eliminate more of the surrounding set. That's true. When you do that, yeah, I was going to say, is that easier for scene integration? And I if, think it's easier in some ways. It might yeah. be harder in others. I mean, again, I don't do this part of filmmaking. Yeah, professionally, it's certainly something that that I have done before, and I I can tell. Like when I'm ma- when I'm making a scene, trying to integrate two pieces and making them look like each other is a lot harder. And like match moving, like 3D match moving is way harder than just creating a scene in a 3D engine. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So I can see that. I would suggest that in a close up where um, you're using a, a shallow depth of field, now the other elements within the space are going to be blurry. That's, uh, I don't, uh. <laughs> uh, that's what I mean. It just, this scene didn't feel like part of the rest of the show. Right. It felt like a separate unit. Right. That's funny. Mm hmm. Weak direction. Yeah. Weak producing. Oof. Weak Dan and Dave. Hey. <laughs> Camera just died. I sure did. All right. We good? We I good. think so. We did it. I think so. We did it, Reddit. I was just saying, Dan and Dave are lazy. We've never... Sh- <laughs> this is new ground. <laughs> I know. Breaking new ground. I know. <laughs> so, whoa. Controversial <laughs> hot take opinion here. This is going to piss some people off. <laughs> Dan and Dave... Are lazy. Uh, it ends with Wade being like, "I'm also going to cryogenically freeze me." Yeah. No. He he says that it's for him, right? Or no, no, it is for both. Yeah, both. Yeah. That, that he's also going to be frozen, so that he can come back once a year for a week, so that he can check in on the mission, watch Wimbledon and something else, okay, and so, go back to bed. So unless that is actually going to happen, why does that matter? I think it is going to happen. Like, literally. Yeah. That's fucking stupid. I think Wade is going to be frozen. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. That is stupid. Yeah. So the one character that will have continuity throughout this series will be Wade. <laughs> will be Wade? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most mid character ever. The next thing is Augie quits again. She quits again? Yeah. Their little scene with uh, Jen and Augie in their office. And she's like, I'm on the wrong side. I've made a huge mistake. I quit. I'm out. I'm, I'm gone. I don't remember this thing, but yeah. what's happening? She's saying she was on the wrong side and that she doesn't want to be involved anymore. Oh, right. She follows him outside? Not yet. That's coming up. Okay. But she's just telling uh, Jen oh. that she's uh, regretting it already. She's out. Neat. So Augie has been in and out at least three times now. I was so invested in Augie. Yeah. Uh, but now they have her um, nanofiber sale, and that's all they needed. That's, yeah. That's all they needed. That's all they needed. Okay. Uh, and now Will is on his paper boat out in the ocean, just floating around. And uh, I thought this was really weird. <laughs> why, why is it weird? Because it was a, a really stark departure from the style of this show yeah we've talked about this before in the talkies about having two different magics in your in your Mm, movie mm -hmm. it was that idea uh that blake snyder wrote in save the cat which is everyone's favorite book i love that book (laughs) um despite uh a lot of the wrong stuff that it says the the two different magics thing i could think is really interesting and we're talking about how you have a surreal element in this show at the same time, you have these aliens in the show, right. and and it's weird to have uh like you can have both. That's totally fine, but if the audience is already grounded to one point, they need to have a, a departure on one or the other. It's weird to have both because yeah. now they're being asked to do too much suspension of disbelief. Yeah, it bothers me because up to this point, everything we've seen that has uh, not fit in with reality of yeah. the show is something that's being manufactured by alien technology, either by the Sofans or the helmets that they're wearing, right. 
creates these otherworldly things that people are experiencing that are outside of the norm. Yeah. Okay. And now we get, we literally go inside of Will's psyche of his brain <laughs> to see his like daydream or right. whatever. Yeah. Or the like manifestation of his emotions. You know. So by the rules that the show has set, I'm going, oh, the Sofans are putting him in a paper boat. Why? Right. You know? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's it's the because we already bought into one idea. Yeah. And it asks us to buy into a different one. Right. So it's if we were seeing the imaginations um, uh, of Will from the get go. Oh yeah. Then yeah. it would fit perfectly. Totally. Totally. But yeah. I thought I thought it didn't fit and just felt weird and. It felt strange to have it right yeah. there. In fact, that kind of contrast made me go. Oh wow! I like I like where this is going because now I feel a little bit more art in uh-huh. it. Just just uh, a decision for to dis- for whatever. Sure, like that's something that went over my head, but it didn't because <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really stay there for long. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, the only time that I like this is at the very end of this episode. Well, we'll get we'll get there. We will get there. In the meantime, Will wakes up from his hallucination to find that his sister. And her husband are at his bedside. Okay, so it is his this sister scene and husband. Is really important. His sister Pay and close attention. <laughs> his sister and and her husband. Yes, not his sister and his brother. No. Okay, because I was pretty, like, really I'm, weirded out. I'm pretty sure they suggested that that was a, a married couple. I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah. This is a great scene, actually, but not for the. Oh, it's a great scene. Yeah, not for. Not for the plot. <laughs> no, no. I like like outside of the context of the show, it's a yeah. really well done scene. It's it's really well done. Everyone did their part correctly. <laughs> it's just why is this written into the show? Yeah, yeah. It 100%. didn't do anything at all. It didn't. No, it didn't. No, I guess it. Shit, did it do anything? No, it didn't do to, anything to Will's. It, it. I mean, the only thing that Will reveals about himself is that yeah, he's a moral character he has kind of a bad relationship with his sister yeah and um that's about it they, they do that underdog shit here again where he's like he said that he's not smart enough that, uh to have been you know one of the physicists or whatever he says that uh that he failed in life or something like that and he brings himself down for so much but it seems like he's he's capitulating to them being like yeah you're right i'm just a nothing exactly it's not like he's serious about it exactly yeah yeah and that's what feels weird and that they keep doing over and over in the show that i really Mm -hmm. don't like yeah so they they basically are there to say oh mom must have left you some money and we think you should give it to us because you're dying and we want to start a family. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I think what I picked up is that he kind of smirks because mom didn't really leave him anything. Yeah. Because he goes like, you're right. Whatever mom left me, it's yours. All of it. And he's <laughs> like, haha, fuck you. <laughs> That's all these scenes are is a big fuck you. Right. Man. And the show, the scene ends and I'm like, oh, that has no relevance to anything. It doesn't. Actually. No, it so, might as well be a flashback. Yeah, or just not in the show would be better. Oh, a skip scene? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, skip, it didn't do anything. Scene. Nothing in the so far has done anything, right, in what we've talked about so far? The whole episode? Yeah. Introducing the cryo. Oh, that part is important. needed, I guess. Yeah. That's about it. So the ape part was more important than this part. Yeah. Yeah. So far, the ape has given us the most important exposition of the episode. Very nice. Yeah. Very We're nice. doing great. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. So now we have this meeting where Wade is talking to his team of scientists, including Jen. Uh, and he says, we don't have enough bombs. Turns out we couldn't get a thousand nukes. Uh, the, the planet Earth has really let us down. Here we thought everyone had all these nukes, <laughs> only 300. And so they can't get to their target with the mass of a whole human in there. Oh, that's the reason. That's the reason. Okay. I didn't know. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and, then, and then Wade's all like, well, what makes a human anyway? A human is just the things inside your brain. And so we got to cut off someone's head. And then he like looks into... Jen's eyes, and it's like, let's kill Will <laughs> with his eyes. <laughs> Does anyone know? Anyone Anybody? know anyone who's ready to die, who's really smart? <laughs> Your friend Will, perhaps? <laughs> let's kill Will. 
That's that's what he said. Yeah. He said, let's kill that's, Will. That's what that that's what that was about. <laughs> Why did he turn down the guy? I'm I'm asking this for a stupid reason. Hmm? The, 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 oh, the guy that rose his hand? Yeah, yeah. That was hilarious. Yeah. He's like, any of you want to volunteer? Yeah. And he, this he, he calls him a retard. He does. <laughs> Don't be a retard. Don't be a retard. <laughs> <laughs> They used a cancel worthy word for Wade. That's okay. Wade, Damn. Wade's that kind of guy. Wade's that kind Wade of guy. Wade doesn't care. He's like, don't be a retard. We don't want you. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> what, I'm, I'm going to analyze this scene further, but like, why, why does the kid raise his hand? Is he caught up in the moment? Yeah. I think he just wants to be a real pleaser of everybody. He's just like end to what, you know, he's definitely a second tier person. Yeah. on this team and wants to be top tier and is like just a, me yeah just a strange take my brain a strange moment it, yeah <laughs> i don't know it, it was just meant to make wade look more like wade i, I guess i guess so yeah yeah strange yeah but the whole scene is basically to just be a big wink at uh, um jen and be like we want will's brain oh man you know what i'm gonna call this what are you gonna call it okay this show Oh, the, you know whole, the show. What is this show? This show. I'm gonna. I'm doing pizza rating right now. Oh, a little, <laughs> prema, a little premature. I'm gonna. Uh, you ever done? Uh, so you've done like jigsaw puzzles. Okay. You dabble. I've watched. Oh, you've watched. I don't really do those. No, they're, they're riveting. My my wife and children like them. <laughs> you don't do. You don't I do hate jigsaw? jigsaw puzzles. Really? Yeah, really. Oh, okay, this is something new that I'm learning. I don't about like that. them at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, in jig jigsaw puzzles, uh, a thousand piece puzzle. It's a pretty oh. big damn. Puzzle. Yeah, it's a big puzzle. It takes about a week to do, or yep. maybe longer, mm -hmm. you know, depending on how much you are. You go down to like seven hundred and fifty, and then it's like a little bit easier, but but. You crave, if you do puzzles a lot, you crave that kind of challenge mm -hmm. and it's not there anymore. Yeah. And then the 500 piece puzzle is even less. A 100 piece puzzle is like a kid's just boring puzzle. Boring. This is a 100 piece puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> the show is a 100 piece puzzle. It is. It's one of those things where it's so Ooh. not complex uh -huh. and the the directors or producers, whoever they are, are, are feeding us just like just very tiny amounts of stuff that are very obvious oh, it's and remember, i hate this <laughs> this this is a prologue i don't <laughs> right milk before meat the, the, the problem milk no, before meat the problem here is that the the ip itself is so interesting and dense and crazy science and stuff yeah and and they're treating it as if it's a friends episode. They gotta dumb it down for the public. I just oh God, I hate that. They gotta so dumb much. it down, you know. So much. They, they can't expect that uh, just average Joe could <laughs> could read three body problem. Like a fucking what what was that? I mean, I, this is different sci fi, but but like The Martian, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. That that's what yeah, I want. That's true. Fucking Dune. Okay, give me Dune. <laughs> that's true. They didn't water down Dune. They didn't. People can understand fucking. The three different things that Ma that Paul is called, Madib and yeah. all those. Hot, but but, but also, it's like, if you don't understand, who cares? You just don't understand no, it. It's not thing. your movie. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that happened with Dune 1 a lot. Yeah. Right? There were so many people with Dune 1 that were like, I just couldn't do it. It was too slow. Right? Uh, didn't understand what was going on. It's not your movie. That's okay. That's fine. But we're making our movie the way we want to make it. Uh, maybe that's what we're seeing here. And I think that's what we've talked about before is that Dan and Dave are making a show that's meant to get in a lot of viewers. Yeah. Yeah. And they're trying to make mass appeal out of something that is probably meant to be very niche appeal. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Three body yeah. problem is not mass appeal. See, now that's weird because three body problem is very popular, right? The book. Yeah. But what does very popular mean? Let's think about the number of people that you know in your life who have read Three Body Problem. Well, sure, uh, not many. <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, it's not even a, a rounding error on like <laughs> Harry Potter. Sure, right? Sure, and that's still popular for a book. Yeah, right. It'll be interesting actually seeing what they do in Dune Prophecy with that. You want to talk show. about Dune instead? Should we oh, talk about absolutely. Dune now? Let's I talk about talking. Dune. <laughs> It's just interesting to see, like, because they have a complicated IP also. Yeah. And they're going to make a show out of it. Yeah. So that's interesting, 
Uh, you yeah. Know, I wonder what the, like they're not. I assume gonna... they're going about it knowing that this is for Dune fans, so we're going to give them Dune. So Dan and Dave are making this because for who fans? They're, I think they're trying to make it mainstream. Just that's what they want. Just make a crazy dense <laughs> physics breaking yeah. science book and just make it mainstream make it, for everybody. Make it mainstream. Just make it for everyone. A culture war. I mean, revolution. they kind of succeeded with that in uh, Game of Thrones. In that they definitely broke beyond just the crowd that likes high fantasy. I think it's crazy, yeah, that Game of Thrones worked so well because Game of Thrones had not only high fantasy, like I hate fantasy. I just, I really, that's not my jam at all. Right. And I loved that series. And, but I also loved it because of the political intrigue. I've never cared about politics before. And that's interesting, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, So I, I I think it comes down to writing and who's, Who's writing the script and who they're writing it for, basically. People need to actually stop thinking about audiences and just Probably. write what they want to write. Because they're the audiences. And thing. include <laughs> stakes that matter. Yeah. That's ultimately what does it, right? Because yeah. um, stakes are universal. They cross over genre, right? If, you, if you're yeah. invested in a character and the stakes feel real then all of a sudden it doesn't matter if you're an alien right. or if you're a dragon right. or if you're a politician. That's what that's what makes something great and something you want to be attached to and you're going to keep following. Yeah, 100%. And I think usually the stakes are brought in when someone's writing something and they feel personally for whatever character they're putting in here because they relate with them. So I imagine that's how most writers write. Is sure. They write what they know. Sure. That didn't happen here, though. Oh, no. No, No. I guess not. No. (laughs) All right. Um, So they're going to kill Will. Right, yeah. Jin Uh, and Augie. Anyone know someone we can kill? Jin and Augie chase Wade outside and are like, hey, that was a dick move. That's so... What? Wade was a dick? (laughs) Yeah. That's crazy. You were going... You've been thinking about Will this whole time, dick. (laughs) And he's like, yes, I did. And he's still perfect. And they're like, we're going to tell him not to. And he's like, go ahead. That's fine. He'll still do it. Right. And uh, and then he has a light bulb moment. He does. Yeah, he goes, the only thing they don't know is what's in our heads. He, yeah. Oh. <laughs> he comes up with a wall facer. Yeah. yeah, he literally goes, oh. <laughs> he literally does. Yeah. I got to go. No, he doesn't. He says, what number am I thinking between one and a thousand? That's it. Yes. <laughs> and they're like, I don't know. And he's like. Yes. Exactly. Yes. As if they needed to know that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a flash of brilliance. Oh, great. It's great. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Whenever okay. I have an idea, I try to get other people <laughs> mysteriously involved. Mysteriously <laughs> <Yeah>. involved. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to tell you my idea, but I'm going to illustrate that I have one. <laughs> okay. Uh, Can you have a new idea for a shot? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what yeah. is it? Okay, so... Have you ever turned on a light before? Yes. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. I leave the scene. That is what happened. And then you walk away. I walk away. Exactly. Exactly. Walk away. (laughs) Cut to decreating the greatest shot in history. (laughs) All right. All right. I see what's going on here. Yeah. What's going on here? Um, What's going on is Wade is calling a mystery man on the phone. While fingering his Genghis Khan uh, stirrup. He's fingering the stirrup. He's fingering the stirrup. <laughs> Fid- fidgeting with He's it. He's fidgeting, yeah. Yep, yep. With his fingers. Yep. He's fingering it. That's what you do. Yep. Uh, no lube. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really creepy if there was lube. <laughs> He's just going... <laughs> Anyway, that's super strange. I digress. <laughs> I, what I was trying to say is that he's calling a mystery man who's like, "I'm very busy, Mr. Wade." Actually, he sounds a lot more nerdy. A lot more what? Actually, actually, <laughs> <laughs> he sounds nerdy. He sounds nerdy. Oh, he's like, he's like, yeah. Oh well, he sounded mysterious and important. I don't. I don't fucking and remember. He's like, I really um, don't remember. He might have. I mean, who like, tells Wade they're too busy for him? He's he's Doctor Claw. That's who it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. And uh, and he's like, "Have you ever heard of a wall facer?" 
That's right, and then cut to black. Yeah. Or cut to... That's, that's what that scene was about. Or cut to Netflix ad or something. Wallfacer has been introduced. We've heard that word now, and, and, and that's going to matter later, so take note. But we don't know. But you don't know it's going to matter later, <laughs> but... <laughs> foreshadowing, Jesus. that's what this is. That's foreshadowing. That's, yeah, foreshadowing is saying something saying that something, people don't know. But in a way that it sounds really <laughs> obvious and like on the nose. You ever heard of a wall facer? That just makes like instant intrigue. It's it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Makes me go, what's a wall? What's a wall facer? Mm-hmm. What's he doing? Cut to Clarence is playing a video game. He's, Clarence in his video game. Yeah, he's playing fucking uh, Mortal Kombat. Yep. Or at least the uh, three body problem version of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I'm trying. To I don't think it's real Mortal Kombat. I think they no, made it, it. I think it's uh, MK. Really. Eleven. Is there a heart stealer in that? Oh, okay. So I haven't caught up. I haven't stayed uh, up to date with yeah. Mortal Kombat. No. <laughs> it's it's not called a hard stealer. I think it's just Shane Shane Sung. Uh huh. Yeah. Why not say that? Because it's IP. Oh damn! But they can use the, the actual footage of the game. Though? They can't can't talk about it. They just can't talk about it. They can't talk about. It. I don't fucking know. I don't <laughs> fucking know. Anyway, <laughs> it looks like Mortal Kombat. I'm pretty. I'm sure it is. Anyway, he's playing a game like. Mortal are Kombat. they trying to say that this is Clarence trying to like understand his son? The fact that he's playing this doing. game now, he's like connecting to his boy why why does this matter why is the boy in the show at all it, yeah well that... oh i know actually i know why he's in the show why because he's going to be in season two. Ah, he's going to be the main character in season ah! two. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> no no <laughs> i'm sure every secondary character that they have in here they're going to move up and replace another <laughs> you'll character. be like will's brain was lost in space <laughs> We're going to use your your boys, Clarence. That now. was a spoiler for what? For the next episode. I was just speculating. He's playing the video game. So, yes. He he dies and he looks up. He sees his boy walking in the room and he goes, "Hot stealer, isn't it? <laughs> Hot stealer, <laughs> in it. it." Anyway, he's holding a tablet, and uh, obviously, if you're just holding a tablet, <laughs> you're like hiding something or have something significant <laughs> this kind of reminds me of something in real life actually yeah uh, yeah completely uh completely i think on accident how they directed this uh, uh we we needed him to come into the space to show his dad the uh the business the business yeah right? so he has it on his ipad so how else is he going to show it without clarence saying it. Clarence says what do you have there yeah yeah and I thought that was a weird leap to take for just seeing your boy holding an iPad <laughs> so, right. like what do you got there what is that <laughs> what is it a YouTube video <laughs> dad <laughs> You're like, oh yeah I was just looking at porn <laughs> I was just looking at porn <laughs> I don't know like what like that was just so weird if, if I see my wife with her phone and I'm like what do you have there <laughs> right. what is that <laughs> what is that oh it's an emoji blitz <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so because I, I my brain didn't go there my brain went to uh the kid fishing for his dad to ask him what it was oh he's like yeah yeah but i've seen a look at my tablet like if if you've seen this in real life i've had someone do this to me where they literally are they try to wa- work on something in front of me uh, like literally on a tablet go in front of me and go hmm i'm busy now right sure it didn't <laughs> seem that way no 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 though. but that's what i felt from not the characters it's so what you felt like the writers wanted you to see? No, that's, that's what the director, uh-huh. I felt like, did on accident. I thought it was funny. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways, um, he's such a in-tune father that he could tell his son had something to show him. Right, and it wasn't porn. And, and that it wasn't <laughs> porn this time. This time, right. Yeah. Yeah. Which and, he, he, goes, he goes, oh, that's his business. And Clarence is like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was going to be porn. <laughs> And so he describes this business that sounds like it's extremely exploitive of people's fear. What, what, so what's the business? It sounds like insurance for moving to Mars. So is moving it, to Mars like a thing that's going to happen? Yeah, and in the future, you're going to... Do they gonna, ever say that? Yeah, that, no, no, not in the show. No, just he says it. Oh. He says, someday you'll want to be able to move to Mars and uh, join our membership here, and then there'll be funding for you to move to Mars. I don't understand. It's like a pay-in sort of scheme. No, I, I heard like and he explains how insurance works right. to his father. He does, yeah. He's like everyone pays into the pool, <laughs> and then there's enough for everyone, you know. Yeah. And then we make that money turn into more money. Yeah. 
It's brilliant. <laughs> um, his uh, I th- I literally thought it was a card game that he was making. <laughs> <laughs> like the he he showed on he was like oh yeah nice. Well, you see nice that would make more that. sense than what actually it actually is. That's what's so that weird. would make more sense because because I saw the Mars thing and I was like oh that's. That's a weird idea. Oh, I must not be reading that right. It's a right. card game or something. Because he's a gamer. Exactly. And an influencer. <laughs> exactly. His audience would want something like that. It makes sense. Not that this scene matters, but if yes. If he has an audience <laughs> if... anyway, because we know he sucks. He can't kill the heart stealer. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> but, but no, that's not what it is. It's a legit business plan mm. with backing from Dennis with a Y. Right. Right. Is it Dennis? Is that his name? Yeah, Dennis with a Y. With a Y. Mm-hmm. And and then the next scene, is directly after that, is showing a picture of Dennis with his name on it on the cover of a magazine, yeah. panning over and showing, oh, it's the dick guy from Augie's nanofiber company. Yeah, with another fuck you moment. Yeah. With that whole thing. Yeah. But why the hell is that guy involved in the business plan of fucking Clarence's teenage son it's a season two that's called foreshadowing God, Kenny. Damn it. <laughs> why would this happen it's like doesn't make any sense at all he's like a nobody youtuber yeah. right foreshadowing is taking something randomly yeah yeah random elements showing it to the audience who doesn't know what they are and then show them again later <laughs> oh that's cool yeah yeah because then when we see it later we'll be like oh, oh yeah, i remember yeah. that from season one that was foreshadowed whoa <laughs> anyway this poor kid's father doesn't even take him seriously it is bollocks and apparently this like big business mogul is like in on his uh yeah i know move right to mars business yeah <laughs> i don't know that's I don't funny know. I guess we'll find out in season two or three, which has been greenlit by Netflix. It has been. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Uh, at the time of recording of, ep- of our episodes one through six, uh, it had not been greenlit. Right. <laughs> that just happened. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yesterday. Yeah. I know. It's like kind of shocking actually. It, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with a much higher budget too. Now uh, we have another scene where Dennis is a, an ass still what dennis is an ass that's crazy he uh he's taken the company away from augie he says it's the least happy he's ever been about a business decision but it's what he has to do right and, and then, this is the plot yeah. that's happening right now this is the plot this yeah is the plot. it's all about this gotcha. this is what the show is about right it's about augie augie and her nanofiber right and then she makes she puts the nanofiber up on like WikiLeaks or something. Which yeah. Public domain, everybody. I thought it was gonna be something I a little I just gave it away. I thought it was gonna be something a little more uh <clears throat> what's the word? A smart? <laughs> smart. A little more business oriented. Uh-huh. Like I I like imagine I just sent it to Google or something. Right. I don't yeah. know. Something. Just sent it to Bezos. Because because I'm not I'm not a business mogul. So yet yet correct. Mm-hmm. I will be. Yep. <laughs> That's foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not a business mogul, but I don't, and so I don't know a lot about business. So I figured that they were going to say something about you know the shares are now public or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how that works. But I thought <laughs> I know what WikiLeaks is. And I'm like, that's, it's just kind of, I felt like it was lazy. I felt like it was just the laziest thing. I'm like, oh yeah, she, if I'm writing this scene. And, and she I'm like, puts it on WikiLeaks. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. This is weird. Yeah. It's just weird. If someone had got the patents for the Tesla engine. Yeah. On WikiLeaks, would they? Would it have made a difference? Yeah. It's still patented. doesn't matter if you have it or not i don't if it's still patented you know (laughs) like it doesn't it doesn't matter if you have the designs for something that someone else owns she talks about how she put in like a guide to how to rip it off Uh, yeah Yeah. um what i was wondering is if at this point does she like if she still has the authority to do that Right then, that this is actually right. all like legal, right? Like, like the security clearance. Yeah, like it's still yeah. hers up to this point, and so she actually can do that. It's not a leak. It's literally I'm 
choosing to give it away and now you can't undo that. Right. Like that would make sense, but they didn't really tell us anything and no, whatever. It's just a scene that says nanofiber is, uh, available to everyone it's, now it's now not owned by anyone yet. yeah and the santi don't care which is okay because remember the santi were like don't make nanofiber <laughs> oh d died stay alive d <laughs> you all right man no oh god <laughs> not all right it's breaking down <laughs> i'm breaking down uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh okay augie <laughs> uh, augie Fucking Augie. Fucking Augie. Okay, God so Augie had had a reason why she didn't want to work with Wade anymore. Yeah. Right? That was like her. She did. She said that so many times. Many times. Yeah. One of those things was using, or the, the only reason, I guess, was using her nanofibers for things that she didn't find were... Yeah, she didn't like the ways he was more, using her tech. Yeah, not ethically responsible. Now whatever. she's just giving it to everyone to do whatever the fuck you want yeah, with what it. What the fuck? <laughs> right so like, now anyone can just turn it into a murder machine exactly like if anything i would be like okay maybe she oh, would delete dude. all of the data not give it away all they gotta do is make a big nanofiber mesh around earth <laughs> and when the santee come they just get they just get shredded she's graded damn just, you just broke you just broke the novel done you just broke the novel yeah it's all you need man <laughs> the iron dome for planet earth <laughs> jen visits will in the hospital and is like you're not gonna do it oh jen has her whole like uh what defense mechanism yeah this is jen visiting will will now knows that wade wants his brain to turn him into an immortal space probe uh which sounds kind of dope because especially if you're like a physicist i'm guessing you're probably an atheist and yeah. I was like, hey, you want an afterlife? It's possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he's like, why would I say no to this? Yeah. And Jen's like, you're not going to do it. This this is really interesting to me uh, because in a uh, in this moral sense that, or I don't know if it's moral, but uh, Will, I don't know if Will, I don't, I really don't know what Will wants, honestly. I don't know what any of these fucking characters want. In the end, he says he'll do whatever Jen tells him to. Right. Okay. So he says that in the end. Right now, Jen's telling him not Jen's to. Jen's telling him not to, and he's like, I think I'm going to. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what the fuck? Exactly. What is going on here? I feel like he's just guilt tripping Jen. Yeah. Because he's like, you know, when it's just him and her, he's like, no, no, I, I think I should do it. And then when <laughs> someone else is watching, he's like, oh, I see. It's obviously the best idea for me to do it, <laughs> but I would change my mind if Jen said not to. <laughs> And Jen's like, I can't say no now. Oh, no. Fuck. Will's evil. Will's a dick. <laughs> oh, my God. What a selfish bastard. Will Will's going to do it. Spoiler. Oh, yeah. Will's going to do it. Everyone's already seen this episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not watching this along with us talking. <laughs> no, they're like pausing the show. Watch a little more. <laughs> what are they going to say now? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hey, hey. Okay. Um... All right, next we're in Win Jay's house, and um, she's looking at a photograph of her and her daughter. Oh my God, her daughter is the follower from the video game. That is actually, wow, that was just a face right there. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't know this. Yeah, I, I missed it my first watch through as well. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's interesting. The girl that the follower is based on mm -hmm. is young Vera Ye. That is really interesting if it i don't know if it matters i just wish yeah 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 like uh, if, like i wish i saw that and was like shit right but it's like oh oh that's a neat oh, connection okay <laughs> okay it's a neat little callback yeah well it does it clears up some confusion that we had over was the video game made by the people Right. And the, the earthlings. Or, or did the aliens make or it? Or was yeah. it made by the aliens? So yeah. it's definitely made by the people. Right. Right. Yeah. If the follower. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And they're like, put my daughter in it. I don't understand. There's uh, there's one thing that I saw from the Chinese show. Mm. Or is that, I actually read about it. I only I watched what the first two seconds of the show. But they say that in the VR part, um, it looks like a PlayStation game, like PS2 or something. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. It is kind of cool, yeah. yeah. And I was thinking, 
why did they feel the need to make it ultra realistic? Like, and change this tech to something that was future. Right. Bringing in that idea that it is like a hundred years away technology. Right. Just confused the idea that this was either what was this alien did the aliens make this or right. did like are the aliens already here on earth did the kind cult of make it yeah yeah so I don't unnecessary know. confusion there just really strange. especially yeah. since this was a method of the cult to recruit people right 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 and yeah you could have done that with n64 you could have tech so she's looking at this photo and then she gets out her cell phone and she calls saul and says, I know you don't want to hear from me, but I need to meet with you. I don't remember that. That's what happens, and that's why the next scene is Win Jay meeting Saul in a graveyard. Oh, Win Jay. Okay, right. Yeah. And um, Oh, yeah, and she does this weird thing. Yeah, this scene yeah. is also fucking nonsense. I don't know if it's and nonsense. She, uh, uh, I think it actually might be foreshadowing. Oh, God. <laughs> Tell me what it is, because I was like... First of all, this joke isn't funny. <laughs> right. Second of all, she goes into this cryptic description of why jokes aren't funny to you. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this was definitely meant to be significant. Right. And I got no clue what's going on here. That is a big problem. And why she's like, I have to talk to Saul before I go to China. Yeah. And this is what she uses that for. That is a big problem big problem on the writing part to, yeah. to describe it to the audience which is really funny because a lot of this that we've said is not cryptic this is 100 piece puzzle this is very very right. easy yeah to see so what's happening here you got I, a theory yeah i think the 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 whole uh, it's weird because it's before the wall facer thing is being yeah. explained um but i feel like that's what she's doing here is she's talking in the open and also hiding information from sofans i think that's what she's trying to do I think she's trying to tell oh. Saul something specific about because because he he repeats a line from her saying don't play with God or something like that yeah um, and I imagine it's gonna come back later I think that's what's gonna happen okay yeah. so yeah she tells this joke about Einstein playing a wanting violin. to play a violin in heaven and God kicks him in the balls yeah and it's like no one plays with God right and she's like you don't get it well that's because jokes are personal. <laughs> right and i'm like whoa okay <laughs> and yeah and then she's yeah and even it's cool though because they keep cutting to him and he's making that face yeah, like he, the fuck he's making the face he's made the whole series well it's it's nice because <laughs> now it's it's matching but the it audience makes sense now it does to be yeah okay, to be yeah, sure that it is. yeah 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 at yeah. least i think that's what is, this is if it turns out that this is not foreshadowing yeah that's then that's fucking stupid i don't know what this I, is i have no clue what this is yeah no clue it felt like if um, if I had like like me and you, we've got some pretty deep, right, inside humor yeah. between each other, stuff that no one else would get because we've been working closely together for so long. Right, and it's like I said, hey, you want to hear a joke? And I say one of our random shit that you and I say. And then they look at me waiting for me to explain. And instead of explaining, I just say, oh, well, it's personal. <laughs> right. Only me and D get it. You don't get it. Yeah. But it's funny to me. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. It's like, what? Like she told a one-sided inside joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have no clue what that was about. Yeah. And neither, I, neither did Saul. And neither did Saul. At least Saul didn't act like it made sense. It didn't seem like it. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I find that our episodes covering this show become weaker episodes as we go on because it's a weak series yeah it's like we have less interesting things to say yeah because <clears throat> there's less for us to grasp onto <laughs> and so we have more and more of the episode is us, is us just going oh that doesn't make sense yep let's move on oh that doesn't make <laughs> much sense either okay anyway god yeah. let's finish this fucking show <laughs> so we can rest in peace <laughs> Um, so uh, now Wade is visiting Will in the hospital to get his consent. I love this. Yeah, this is pretty cool, actually. I love this because because Will giving consent before he dies is just really funny to me. Uh huh. Because he because if he doesn't choose to sign it, then what happens? What if he breaks the contract? Yeah. And he's light years away. Who the fuck cares? 
<laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> oh, well, well, I think Wade realized that too, right? Because he's like, okay, last document, sign this to swear that you will always be loyal to humanity. Yeah. And he's like, no, I won't sign that. I won't, I like, <laughs> I'll be loyal to some things, but not humanity. That's another, okay, we talked about this last time about humanity. Yeah. This whole theme that seems to be at odds with each other where we have, mm. Is humanity worth saving? Right. Or, or is it, or are we like fucking stupid? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he's clearly saying like, I no, I know too much about humanity to swear loyalty to right. them. As if, as if love is better than humans overall, which yeah. is fine. That's a great perspective to have. Yeah. Not a great one, but it's, it's. Well, nice he suggests, what if I meet the Santi and they're better? Right. 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 I think, it, I think it's, it's just a weird thing to say when it's not. Which I don't think it's about the theme, right? I think the theme is about saving humanity. I think it's about humanity can be saved because we're actually not as bad as we think we are. Yeah, worth saving. Right. But it doesn't seem like it's that. Saul doesn't, I mean, uh, Will doesn't say so anyway. It doesn't seem like it's Will's thing. It feels like he's talking through the writers. It feels like this is a Maybe. story moment. But Wade says, hey, well, that actually makes you perfect for the job. Yeah, wait in this. That's what I wanted all along. I, I hate, I hate that. This is what me. I've always wanted was you to reject <laughs> signing that document. <laughs> wait, does I'm a step ahead of everyone? Yeah, always. <laughs> wait is always that way. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, it's so. He's stupid. just the smartest man in the room. <laughs> you know what this is? If you if you were to uh, if you were to write a script out and you were thinking about okay, what does my character do now? But you're trying to be realistic about it, and you're like, okay, so I'm writing that Kenny is talking to Devon right now, and. Kenny's not going to listen to Devon drone on and on and on. What is he going to do? He's going to check his phone. And then now I need, now I need to do something about that because it's more veering off of the story. So Devon says, I wanted you to check your phone. That's what Wade is. That's right. Yeah. It does seem that way. Wade's that. And he fancies gin. Right. <laughs> According to Raj. Yeah. He spent $19.5 million on the star. Can't wait to see them hook up. Yeah. It's going to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> See Jen hooking up with his cryogenically frozen body. Nope. Nope. Mm. Nope. Mm. Let's not do that. Anyway, um, uh, we cut to a trailer in the woods, and uh, it's Tatiana. I hate this scene. She's got cereal. <laughs> She's got a TV. She's got connection to a satellite or something. Something. She's doing okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't know how she. I, I guess she's some kind of super killer or something. So maybe she just murdered people to get what she has. I don't know. This is this scene is the reason why I'm not that excited for for season two. Uh, it's this scene specifically. Yeah, because you know she's going to be a big part of it. It's the Sofan and the 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 Santi mm. are supposed to be the Santi. They've disconnected from humans. Yeah, because they're alien. And again, we're trying to separate humans from aliens. Yeah. And Tatiana is somehow... She's important. She's worthy. Yeah. That's stupid. They reach back out to her <laughs> on the TV. The, on the TV. And that's, yeah, what, using the that's also really funny because a Sofan could make you see anything right. at all. Right. I mean, she could appear standing in her living room. <laughs> that would have been so... And she's like, I'm on your television screen. <laughs> like I've hacked your connection to satellite. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, why? I don't know. I don't. Yeah, that's weird. That's why the, not make her feel like she's on the ship? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. God, Instead, that she's like, so "Hi, much... I'm on your television." That's so weird. It is weird. It's a lack of good imagination for one thing. Lazy. I hate when I'm actively watching a show when in the moment I'm like, oh, I could have done that better. <laughs> I know mean, been better. You know, been cooler than this. It would if this happened. The um. You should not have time. To think that no, again and the the theme with this I I don't I don't feel like I don't feel like we're getting there. The um, there's a dissonance between the plot and the characters. Indeed, there's there's a character thing going and there's a plot thing going, yep. and they're never connecting. And we talked yep. about how the Friends episodes are here and whatever. And Tatiana feels like it's a character moment that. Tatiana is this type of evil character that is against humanity that she'll side with the aliens. And yeah. Murder. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But what does she have to do with this plot? Don't know. I don't. But it's foreshadowing. 
I know it is. <laughs> yeah, it's all foreshadowed. This is actually foreshadowed. Because she will have something to do with the plot. Yeah, and I hate that. What, is she going to be the Sophon? Is that what's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> She's the human Sophon? I don't know. <laughs> She's going to be something. I just, I just why do you, why, you're, you're an ultra-intelligence race at this, at, at this moment of aliens, and you need help from humans? I can't speak for the Santi. But Tatiana can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, they recruit her back in. They're like, "You, you, we, we still have stuff for you to do." And yeah. she's like, "Yeah." She Look, smiles. Yeah, she smiles. She's, <laughs> like that. I like how when like she, she's crazy when she sees the TV and the so the the character called Sofon. Yeah. For the first time. Yeah. Um, that she doesn't lose her shit. That she's just like, huh? Huh? Yeah. It's you. Like she recognizes her and been like. What, what do you want from uh, I I'm not I'm not you know it's like seeing God <laughs> it's mm. like you remember to see God in front of you yeah like oh I'm not worthy why are you here yeah well maybe she's crazy <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah maybe that's it <laughs> she just might be crazy maybe that's what it is <laughs> uh, so Tatiana's back on the board yeah the stakes are higher now high stakes now. tatiana's on the board look out oh shit shit's gonna get scary yeah i guess that's probably one of the things is that it doesn't change the stakes <laughs> i think it's supposed to though it doesn't though yeah, i know <laughs> this is why i keep calling it the character moment because oh. it doesn't change any stakes you know what's also funny is that no one has referred to her by name in the whole series up to this point yeah <clears throat> other than us because we looked it up yeah but in the show no one she doesn't have a name and they're like, Tatiana. <laughs> like, oh, that's her name. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> now, Winjay's at the airport. And Baldy is in line behind her because he's following her without her noticing. Or at least, so we thought. So we thought. And she walks right up to him and is like, I changed my seat so we could sit together. I'd love someone to talk to. Such a fuck you moment. And he's like, <laughs> I don't know who you are. And she's like, yeah, you do. And she, and then he's like, okay, I do. Uh, I, I do. Let's be friends. <laughs> <laughs> now we're friends. It is a long flight. It's a long flight. He's discount Jason Statham. Yeah. It'll be a good time. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Turns out discount Jason Statham is no match for Tatiana, though. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, cool, fun fact that uh, I already told you, but I didn't tell you here. Uh, the person, person who voices... Her voices. The person who plays <laughs> Yeh Wen Jay. Yeah. Uh, freaking reads the book. She's the uh, narrator of the audio book. Yeah. That's oh. awesome. Hey, that's dope. Yeah. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You know, it'd be neat as if she was the main character. <laughs> I've been, we've been saying that all along. That'd she be should so be neat. the main character. That'd be neat. This show should have been, been about her. Uh, yeah. She has the most interesting story. She, and she's like a minor piece of the, the <laughs> fucking show. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> like, they piss me off. Dan and Dave just piss me off. Yeah? Yeah. That's what this is. This is just us getting progressively more angry. <laughs> they hurt me so bad with Game of Thrones. Like, it's a wound that has never healed yeah. that I still talk about all the time. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Anytime Game of Thrones comes up with, uh, and I'm with someone else who likes Game of Thrones, and then we, we trauma bond. We do. Over we do. what Dan and Dave did to us what they did to us yeah yeah i hate them <laughs> and now they're doing it again they're back up back to their old games and we're pissed you need to do better actually you need to downgrade into lesser ip and just be the same you know and then then we'd forgive you <laughs> you know we had the same advice for uh what was it m night Shyamalan and alex garland yeah they both went opposite ways true yeah Alex Garland uh, made Civil War, the, the biggest movie ever made by A24, <laughs> or the most expensive one at least. Uh -huh. And M. Night Shyamalan first did, uh, what was it, the grandma place? The Visit. The Visit. Yeah. Uh, which was neat. And then he started going back up again. And then Split, and then yeah. Split 2. Glass. Glass. Yeah. Oof. 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 <laughs> Good God. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. There's so many directors that we just know better than. <laughs> We're just better. We know better than so many of these huge Hollywood producers and directors. That's right. 
That's right. That's why we're here. That's right. Exactly. We're here to help. <laughs> you need us. We're here shooting on two separate uh, cameras that don't match uh, in this little in this little studio because it's we're besides better. Besides the point, because, because we're better. We have genuity. Exactly. Because we're better. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> all right. This next sequence was actually quite good, and it's Saul is with Will at the place of his death basically love this scene for that other plot line that's not the plot yeah, yeah. yeah. and so he's given this uh tablet where he has to consent five times in a row to actually die mm -hmm. and then he's going to get like a lethal injection and die yep and they have a very good dialogue sequence between the two of them they do saul raises some really good points he's like you know you might be resurrected to some kind of alien hell. Oh, oh, right. This was weird. This was weird. Oh, you, do you think so? No, no. So I love the sequence. Uh-huh. Um, and they're shooting coverage in the same way that I feel like they should, where they, they start cutting in closer for, you know, the more emotional scenes. Yeah. But the, um, the part, <laughs> yeah, I feel like Saul goes way too far with these metaphorical or not metaphorical, but theoretical or hypothetical situations. And it's really strange. I know why he's doing it. Obviously, he's like, he's he's not trying to scare Will so much as he's 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 dumping his emotional baggage. Yeah, I think know? he wants to talk Will out of it so he can have more time with Will. Right. Sure. And but it's so funny. I think that he's like, no, they could do this to you, and they could do this to you, they could do this to you, and he just keeps going. And I'm like, Shaw, shut the fuck. Up, I know, dude. man. Let the guy die. <laughs> Let him die. Yeah. And actually, they've been this way to Will, kind of the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's an asshole. I kind of. Because I'm like, like earlier when he's like, uh, no, I don't want to go confess my love to Jen. <laughs> right? And they're like, you're an idiot. You, you should go do it go now. Do it. Do it. <laughs> and I'm like, God, which one, which one of you is dying of cancer right now? <laughs> yeah. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, it is a it is a pretty emotionally potent sequence. I, I think they they actually they did a good job yeah. with this sequence. Yeah, I know. I think it's because it doesn't fit in the movie. It doesn't, but it's still it was well done. Yeah, I think it's it's their acting chops that we're talking about. Yeah, because because uh, Will's really good. Both of them are yeah. really good in the scene. They were great in the scene. Um, same with Jen when Jen does the whole the, in the next part. Right within it, she has her realization. It's Wade tells Jen that the star was from Will. Right, and he's like, "Oh, you didn't know that." And of course, Wade obviously knew she didn't know that because he's he knows everything. He's always a step ahead. Right, because he was just being a dick. He's a step ahead. He step wanted ahead, Jen to run there and miss her opportunity. <laughs> he, wanted. <laughs> he wanted all this to happen. I don't know why. This whole thing he it's planned. all part of his plan. He planned this He's whole thing. He's always a step ahead, man. Only advance. <laughs> Only advance. The, uh, Wade was the one who told uh, Wenjay to tell the aliens to come. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, Wade I wanted there. you to. <laughs> yeah, he was there. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Uh yeah, so anyway, right before, well, right when he's contemplating, clicking confirm for the last time, he looks over at his goldfish, and then he goes back to his paper boat. This is a beautiful shot, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, I really like this scene a lot, um, yeah. where he's in the boat and it's raining. And then that it's... comes one beat later. Oh, does it? First, he's just in the boat, and then we cut to Jen running, mm -hmm. and then Ren, Jen gets there then they're cleaning up. throws open the door he's gone they're cleaning up and then we go back to will in the boat and it's raining and then it stops yeah and i'm like oh they just killed him what a neat i don't know it's cool thing yeah it's cool that's see that's thematic that's thematic relevance there like why why do they do that here and I know. never anywhere else? Yeah. No, the show's a big old clusterfuck but <laughs> oh, it was nice it was nice yeah yeah that was a really cool interesting i felt interaction things. i felt things yeah on my second watch i was like this doesn't matter but it doesn't matter at it all it doesn't matter <laughs> no yeah in terms of shows that need fat trimmed yeah this is such a fat show it's extremely it's just fat. very yeah. fat yeah this is like a what, i am so going to body shame this show <laughs> <laughs> if you get a uh in in 80 20 ground beef this is more like a 10 90 <laughs> oh, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, this is ten percent lean. 
Okay. 90% fat. 90% fat. <laughs> yeah. It's just gristle. <laughs> Nasty. All right. Yeah. So Will, uh, then um, Jen is in this like observation room with Saul and seeing that they're just putting his brain into the cryo chamber. Yep. And I'm like, did Saul just fucking sit there and watch them cut his brain out? Is that what just happened here? That's what this seems to be suggesting, is that Will was watching while they cut his friend's head open. I guess that is what it is. I'm like, what is with this observation I've never, chamber? I never thought about that. Like, they have that for, like... Um, execution you know <laughs> right when when you want to you want to witness the right. death of your child's murderer or sure. something sure which is still kind of fucking barbaric that's it's I, really I, fucking i'm not weird, into yeah. that uh, this seemed really weird <laughs> that they're like come and watch come and watch the operation come and watch. we got a big window we can watch the whole thing <laughs> what the hell yeah weird like what if what if jen had run in five minutes earlier and they were like hey gang, gang, gang. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and she's like oh! <laughs> oh god what they, the hell they almost had a, a scene kind of just like that when uh <laughs> she watched jack die over the right security footage right. This, yeah, this reminds me of that it's like why were they showing the footage of jack being murdered to his friends it's because they don't know how else to make <laughs> jen like lose her shit the writer, yeah. the writer's like, okay, now she sees some fucked up shit. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. Anyway, Jack's brain is now <laughs> safely in a cryo chamber, awaiting his not, not quite alive, not quite not dead. quite dead, and, and waiting delivery to the stars. And Jen knows the star was from Will. All the pieces are are in the, on the board. For a huge epic finale. It's epic. It's going to yeah. be so crazy. It's going to be crazy. Can't wait. Tatiana kills Win J at the end. <laughs> Tatiana, <laughs> Tatiana and Win J have a, have a really nice uh, cozy moment. Very cozy. Win J yeah. goes back to the site of her origins. Which, why is she up there? Is this too, is, is Baldy bringing her here to kill her? No, she wanted to go there on her own. Then why is Baldi there? She with was him? planning to kill herself. Oh, okay. So Baldi's there because he was told follow her <laughs> by Wade. Wade said follow her wherever she goes. Just That's re- it. Just report. He's like <laughs> watching her kill herself. I need her. Yeah. He goes, I, okay. Uh, so she's dying. <laughs> yeah. She's uh, currently slicing her wrist, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's all. That's what. That's all we have that's to good. go on. That's good. Um, I'm glad we we. But had they a... became buddies on the way. Right. I'm glad we had that moment. Yeah, because when they get there, she, she's literally in his car. Like like he drives Wait, him. Wait, didn't say that Clarence told him to follow her. Right. Yeah. Right. That's true. So he's just some cop. Uh, some kind of cop. Yeah. I don't. I don't get this. <laughs> yeah, well, he wasn't very um, formidable because the next thing we know, while Win Jay's consider basically psyching herself up to jump off a cliff, yeah, uh, she hears the voice of Tatiana, and the, who, who we've all missed, and she's here. Yeah, like she got herself to China really fucking fast. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the Sofans helped her up. Yeah, they hooked her up. <laughs> Hooked her up with a jetpack. <laughs> That's right. And uh, when Jay's like, "What happened to uh, Officer? What's his name?" And she's like, "Oh, well, was that his name?" Right. Meaning, you know, she killed him. Right. And so I'm like, he's not very tough, I guess. Or I, or Tatiana is really that fucking lethal. Savage. Yeah. Yeah. She just shows up and is like, "You're dead." And uh, and she's like, "It's weird you came here because uh, to kill me because I was gonna just do it myself and." She's like, you should let me do it. It'll be better. I wish, I wish this whole moment. I wish I, I felt like Tatiana was evil at this point. Oh yeah, if Tatiana was evil, and if Win J was the main character, <laughs> yeah, as right. she should have been, <laughs> yeah. then this would have been the Ned Stark scene right. of season one. Oh damn, that would have been like cool. it could have been a devastating scene where we were like, what? Right. Win J is supposed to be in season two. Right, right. No, you yeah. know, and just be shocked, yeah. right? There's zero stakes here. No. Zero. You don't care that Winjay dies. No. Because she didn't matter already. She never did. I mean, like... She only the, mattered in the first three episodes, really. Yeah, yeah. When they when they have the interrogation and all that, all, all they're doing is 
they're not even like getting information from her. They're giving information to, to her. her. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and yeah. and that's it. She became a useless character pretty much after she sent the message to the Santi. Yeah, really pretty much. There was nothing left after that. Yeah. yeah. So this whole, I, I really wanted Tatiana to be evil here because, because this She whole, was so nice. The, that's what was, she loved Winjay. Yeah, and it was funny because the last time that we saw Tatiana and Winjay together was at the summit, right? Yeah, and Tatiana she went against Winjay's wishes, right? Yeah, and and when she when she did that, she was like looking, she was like looking at uh, Jin, really not wanting her to be next to Winjay, who I, you know, she's the founder. Yeah, she's like she's pretty angry, so I'm like, yeah, okay, so Tatiana should be like. I, I thought what she was going to do is just pull, push Winjay off the cliff here. Uh huh. You know, because she's so mad at her, which yeah. I, which I would make sense to me. Still would have been dumb because she was going to kill herself anyway. 100% would have been stupid, but it would have been, it would have made sense for an evil character to say, don't do that. I can give you yeah. something better and then just do it. There was also a bit of, uh, revealed about Tatiana's character here that just created more questions than answers. In that uh, when Winjay sees her, she immediately understands that she's here to kill her. Right. Right. She's like, oh, it's sad that you've been sent here to do a thing that I was about to do myself. Right. The fact that she immediately knows that Tatiana's presence means she dies. What does that mean? Right. <laughs> like, what does that come from? Yeah. That, that obviously I- implicates some other deeper story here that we have not heard yet well, that's the other thing is that i feel like because tatiana tatiana says that she or that the, the lord is not done with us and when jay says i thought they were and she's like and well not done with not, all of us not all of us <laughs> she's still, done with the you. lord still likes me <laughs> yeah, right you done yeah but yeah but she's that, like but you deserve rest yeah i don't don't kill yourself it'll be terrible you should let me do it it'll be gentle it just it doesn't make any sense. Well, I wish I had more to say, but that's how this episode ends. That's it. <laughs> that's the end of the episode. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And only one left. Cool. Can you imagine how, uh, what's going to happen? These stakes are so high right the stakes now. Stakes are high. Well, I mean, yeah. the aliens are 400 years away. Yeah. And uh, the person who started it all is dead. And uh, Will is a brain in a jar. It's it's about to go it's about to go crazy. And now, now. everyone has access to the plans for <laughs> for the nanofibers. fucking nanofibers. <laughs> oh shit's gonna get crazy. So in crazy the, in the final episode. So crazy. Yeah, can't wait. Wow, Tatiana's back in the picture. Tatiana's killing people. Wow, just killing people. She's killing people. Yeah. So, um, Wade. Uh, Wade is is a uh, pretty pretty fucking unhinged. <laughs> He's very unpredictable at this point. <laughs> he, is, yeah. he can say anything and be like, that's always been the plan. And yeah. That's what um, I wanted Tatiana to kill one Jay. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> Everything's been part of the plan. Uh, and only advance. Only advance. Only advance. Yeah. All right. Well, tune in next time <laughs> for, for the, finale. the epic finale to <laughs> Three Body Problems Season 1. A. Hey. Uh, where, uh, spoiler. There will be a pretty heavy metaphor involving cicadas. <laughs> that metaphor was really interesting in the book. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> this has been Deep Dish from Carmen Line Studios, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Hey. hey, I know you thought the episode was over, but ah, we forgot to do the um, the pizza slice rating. So for it's days this. later now. Uh, it's quite a few days it's later, very, actually. It's very long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm much older than when we recorded that episode. Yeah, that was years ago. Indeed. Yeah. So anyway, but we won't leave you bereft of a pizza slice rating. <laughs> I'm so, uh, like, I know you were freaking out. Let's just let's just You're get like, straight. Wait, into what it. about the pizza? Let's just get straight into it. I'm ready. Let's do it. I'm ready. You okay. Yeah. Episode seven. Yeah. Of three body problem. If what kind of slice pizza? of pizza? Yeah. If this was a pizza slice, what kind of pizza slice would it be? I'll tell you what it is. Tell me. Uh, this is a, a a slice of pizza that uh, let me, let me go with um, let's say Mountain Mike's. 
Wow. Okay, Mountain Mike's is decent pizza. It's pretty decent. Okay. So I mean, it, they, they're known for their cupped pepperonis. And yeah, you know no, how, no. That's what I mean. It's you know a, how we feel about cupped pepperonis. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, a pepperoni should not lay flat. They shouldn't. On a pizza. They should cup. It should curl up. Yeah, and turn a, into a little bowl of grease. A little bowl of grease. Yeah, that's a little what you shot, want, little right? Shot, shot and Mountain Mike's us. does that. Yeah, that's great, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what this episode was to me, yeah, is a Mountain Mike's pepperoni and cheese pizza. This is great so far. Slice. Okay. Right. Okay. So someone grabs that slice and puts it on your plate. Yeah. And you're like, ooh, that looks so good, and. And you take the first bite and it tastes good, and the second bite tastes good, and the third bite tastes good, and the fourth bite is when you notice that there's something a little we- like a weird texture thing going on, and then you finally look at what you're eating, and there's like insects in the um, in the crust. That's disgusting. I'm, I'm gonna go with like some kind of uh, maggot. <laughs> Some kind of maggot? <laughs> yeah. There's a larva. <laughs> a larva. <laughs> That's gross. It's not a fully developed insect. It, it's a larva, a pupa wow. form. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it, living in the crust. Gross. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> and uh, and I do this because um, there was so much cool going on here, and, and yet there was poison in the well the whole time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Just uh, like... The whole will becoming, uh, making his sacrifice and becoming a brain to be sent into space really could have been something special if the show was about that. And it wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, It really felt like the season should have ended before this happened. And this was like part of season two. (laughs) Right. And there's, I think there's a book reason for that. Uh, You're you're probably right. A Dan and Dave reason for it. Uh let's, Let's be real. Um, so, so that's your slice of pizza. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, it tasted really good. And then, oh, I actually <laughs> kind of regret this now. I've made some bad choices and wow. I'm going to go try to make myself vomit. <laughs> <laughs> you have to purge yourself of this mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Well, my slice of pizza is a little different. Go. Yeah. I know mine doesn't have maggots in it or anything like good. that. Good. So mine, mine has more protein though. That's true. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. Okay, we'll see. Mine is uh, you go to a really, really, really high-class pizzeria. Okay? okay. I'm talking like they're they're claiming the, the family came from Italy, right? Uh, everything, everyone's been talking about this pizza. It's just, it is just like... You know, five stars on Google type of type of pizza. Like, you're, like it's 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 a pizza place that's just. <laughs> Kenny's like, where are you going? With this? I am. <laughs> Keep so, going. Go on. So, top of the line pizza place. Uh huh. Everyone's been talking about it, and you go there, and you sit down, and uh, you order one slice of pizza, not a whole pizza, a whole slice. Okay. Huh? And then what happens is when they bring it to you, um, and set it down, it is. A Mountain Mike's cheese pizza slice. From it's a Mountain Mike's cheese pizza. Okay. Yeah, it's from Mountain Mike's. It's no maggots pizza. though. There's no maggots. Okay. But it's Mountain Mike's cheese pizza, and you're like, this is like illegal, right? Like, right. You can't. Like I came to Italy to taste the uh, authentic, yeah, real thing. Yeah. Five stars on Google. Mm. Mountain Mike's. This is the most obvious pizza there ever was, and it's being touted this high class. That's that's not good. Damn. Yeah. That kind of stings. There you go. Ouch. That's my pizza. Uh, Okay, there you have it, folks. (laughs) Those are the pizza slices for episode seven. See you next time. Yep, bye.